If you have your Bibles, turn to the 16th chapter of Mark. And uh, this morning we're going to talk about the commission of winning souls. And unfortunately, I believe that that's one of the areas where a lot of churches have have uh, missed out on is, is we've come together as people um, into these church organizations and we have our buildings and our little cliques on the inside of the buildings where we we get together and we um, we do what we call worshiping the Lord and we preach and we do these things and um, but it seemed like we've lost our original commission. Now I have to call it the commission of winning souls because we've lost that. We've we've lost focus of what our commission is. It is not for just a bunch of believers to come together and enjoy one another's company and you know to to have our church programs and all of these things that we do. Ultimately, our commission is to uh, win souls. If we know in the third chapter of John, around the 16th verse, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Now, if God sent his Son for the purpose of souls uh, being won and not being lost, uh, if love was th was the was the purpose uh, uh, was the uh, I guess the driving force behind his son being sent to of his love of the world, uh, then it should be the same thing with us. Our love for people should drive us to want to win them to Christ. And oftentimes, what happens is is uh, we as uh, churches and things that w w when we come together, if we're not careful, uh, we'll lose sight of that. And we'll we will um, get caught up in all these different programs that we have have made to come to to, uh, 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 to focus on. Okay, let's go ahead and start reading at, at chapter sixteen and verse one. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome had bought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulchre at the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, Who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulchre? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. And entering to the sepulchre, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrightened. And he said unto them, Be not affrightened. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold, the place where they laid him. But go your way, tell his disciples and Peter that he go before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him as he has said unto you. Now this is, this is where our commission is started at right here. Is Jesus Christ uh, made it known from the beginning of his ministry that he had come to die for the sins of the world. Unfortunately, people at that time, they didn't understand that. And uh, his, even his own disciples, they tried to uh, fight against that. And they tried to fight for his life and for him to keep his life instead of uh, allowing him to do what he was sent here to do, which was to die for the sins of man. And so here the commission is fulfilled. Jesus Christ of came. He's ministered. He's made disciples of men. Um, he's been turned over to the Sanhedrin and to the to the uh, people that wanted to kill him. And he's given his life for mankind. And now on the third day here, he's risen from the dead. And so this is our this is the uh, cornerstone of our commission is that Jesus Christ came and died for our sins, died in our place. Now, this is our commission. And this is the gospel and the good news that we preach. That no longer are we subject to laws and no longer are we subject to trying to obtain our own righteousness. But Jesus Christ, that holy lamb of God, have been sent in his own righteousness. And uh, he died for our sins so that we ourselves wouldn't have to try to live up to some certain standard of the law. Now what we do is we believe on him and believe in, in his finished work, which is the cross itself. Okay, go ahead and keep reading. And they went out quickly and fled from the sepulchre, for they trembled and were amazed. Neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he cast seven devils. And she went and told them 
that had been with him as they mourned and wept. And they, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, believed not. After that he appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked and went into the country. And they went and told it unto the residue, neither believed they them. Afterward he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. Now, here's one thing we have to point out. That word upbraided, it's an old English word, which basically means he chewed them out. He uh, chewed them out and gave them a good tongue lashing. Why? For their unbelief and hardness of heart. Now, this is where ministers, now we're talking to ministers now, especially today. This is where ministers have come up short in. Is their unbelief, what, what does unbelief say? Unbelief says that, we're not, we don't really believe the commission that we have. We, we've gotten away from the original plan of God, which is to win souls. Hardness of heart is that, that uh, laziness that comes with, with our commission. In other words, we've gotten relaxed uh, when it comes to the things of God, when it, you know, especially, and we've lost focus on what our commission is, which is winning souls. Why are we coming together? every week if we're not winning souls what is the point of us coming together if we've lost our main commission now, of course we know we come together to to uplift one another and to praise god and, and those things and all of those things are good but ultimately our job is to win souls and if we're not doing that then why how are we being effective for the kingdom of god god commanded his his uh apostles here to preach the gospel and even after he was risen from the dead he had to have to give them a good tongue lashing because they themselves had went back to their normal life. They had, they had just forgotten all about what Jesus had said in their own unbelief and hardness of heart and just went about living their own life. And this is what happens uh, with ministers. Uh, we try to do both things at the same time. We try to carry on with our own normal life. And at the same time, we do a little bit of what, what we think God has commissioned us to do. And that we're going to have to at some point realize that we have to be either all the way in or all the way out. You can't be halfway in and halfway out when it comes to our commission. We have to be willing to surrender everything that we know uh, as far as our own lifestyle and all of those things and get out of our own comfort zone for the purpose of doing what God have called us to do. And so here it says that he upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart. Now, you keep in mind that these are his ministers. These are men who he have poured into for the last three and a half years. They have seen the miracles that he's done. They have witnessed uh, Lazarus being raised from the dead. They witnessed all of these great things. They witnessed him walking on the water. All of these great miracles that he's done. And it's like it all counted for nothing in their eyes because they've completely just gone out of the way and didn't believe exactly what he had been telling them for the last three and a half years. And I wonder today if we're not in the same shape. If we haven't ourselves forgotten all of the great things that God have done for us. And we've forgotten about uh, all of the great things that God have also done for others. And we totally uh, uh, push that to the side when it comes to our commission. All of these things that God does for us is for the purpose of pushing us along into our destiny, which is winning souls. And so here uh, we see that, that they have been upbraided. Okay, go ahead and keep reading. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now here's another thing we want to point out in verse 15. It says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world. And preach the gospel to every creature. Now that's that's another thing that we, we want to point out in this, this lesson here. Is that our commission is to preach the gospel to every creature. Not to those who we think is going to come along. Not to those who we think maybe have a chance of getting saved. Every creature has to hear the gospel. Now it's not our decision on who actually comes to the Lord after we've preached. It's not That's not anything that we can control. But what we can do is do what God called us to do. And what I have found out in, in the ministry that I the Lord have entrusted with me is that a lot of times the people who come to the Lord, they're not those people who you would normally look at and think, okay, they have a chance. That is, it don't happen that way. Most of the time when people come to God, it's totally unexpected by you. Now, it's not our job as ministers to try to figure out who's going to come and who's not and to try to go to this person and not to that one because we just don't think they're going to hear it. Oftentimes, God has prepared people to hear it, but we have to do our part and go and, and, and present the gospel to them. Go ahead and keep reading. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned and these signs shall follow them that believe in my that shall believe 
In my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven, and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, and confirming the word with signs following now no, now notice what this says that they went forth preaching everywhere they didn't limit themselves to any particular place in fact when you look when we uh, look in the book of Acts we see that they were all uh, in Jerusalem when Jesus Christ went back to heaven to sit on the right hand of glory they were all in Jerusalem and they all intended on staying there but according to the word God raised up a man named Saul to persecute the church to, and what that did, that scattered them out into the world. They had to go, they had to leave Jerusalem because that is where the persecution of the church had begun. And so from that, that being said, we know that God had a purpose for Saul being raised up. Why? Part of it was to scatter the, the, the apostles. Now, a lot of times God has to scatter us to get us into our commission. And uh, it shouldn't come to that if we would just do what God called us to do. But oftentimes God have to have to make trouble uh, where we are so that we'll be willing to get out of our out of our comfort zone. And so you notice also in verse um, 19, it says that after he had spoken unto them, he was received into the, uh, 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 received up into heaven. Verse 18, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and the sick shall recover. Now, all of these things are things that God ministers are supposed to be doing. If we have been sent by the Lord, and if we've been commissioned by God, then part of our job is laying hand on the sick and the sick recovering. In other words, God, according to verse 20, if we're really sent and commissioned by God, then part of that commission, God is, is, is obligated to, to work with us with signs and wonders. Why? Because those signs and wonders are to help people to believe that we're sent by God. Now, if you have your Bibles, let's go to the ninth chapter of Luke. The ninth chapter of Luke. Uh, we're still talking about the commission of, of winning souls. And it is a it is a commission. It's a great commission. And, you know, we have to think about when we're out and about uh, traveling or whether we maybe going to the store or going to the park or wherever we are. We always have to have, as ministers, have that commission in the back of our minds. Why? Because God might allow you to come across somebody that need to be preached to. Now, oftentimes, uh, and I've known preachers who won't preach to uh, anybody that's, uh, unless there's a, a large crowd. I guess they've gotten big-headed and they think that they are uh, more than, you know, what God have called them to be. And so they have this mindset of, I won't preach unless there's a large crowd in front of me, or I won't preach unless I'm in church. But when we read the Bible here, we read that most of the preaching that Jesus Christ and the apostles did were on the outside of the synagogue and on the outside of the temple. In other words, we are called to go into the world and preach the gospel. Not, and the problem with the church today is we're waiting on the world to come into the church. And nine times out of ten, that's not going to happen. We have to go and preach the gospel to them, not wait on them to come. And that's what happens every Sunday, every Wednesday, whatever we we come amongst ourselves and we just preach into the choir. Basically, it's like the old saying going just preaching to the choir, preaching the gospel to people who have already been saved. When people have been saved, then they need to be taught the gospel and preaching is for the unsaved. And so preaching should be taking place on the outside of the four walls, not on the inside, because nine times out of ten, the people that need to be preached to aren't coming to church. They're in their homes on, on Sunday mornings. And so we have to remember that when, we, when we're talking about the Great Commission. All right, the ninth chapter of Luke, we're going to start reading at verse 57. The ninth chapter of Luke. And it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou go. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. And he said unto them, unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury their dead, 
but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. So here was a man who wanted to follow the Lord. Two men here. One man, uh, Jesus, he's, he's coming to the Lord and he says he will, he, won't, he will follow him wherever he go. And Jesus is letting him know the, the cost of following him. He's letting him know, I don't have a certain dwelling place. He said, foxes have holes. Uh, the birds of the air have nests, but I don't have a place to lay my head. To, in other words, I don't have a certain dwelling place, so I have to be willing to go wherever God send me. And this is what our uh, we should be aware of that when we answer our call, that there may be times where we're put in situations that's not comfortable to us. But we have to be willing to, to follow along with wherever Jesus lead us to go. Now, oftentimes, like I said, that's not comfortable. And the, the main thing that I find is that a lot of preachers and a lot of ministers do not want to get out of their comfort zone. And so they stay in that comfort zone. They stay into in their home church or whatever it is that they're familiar with. And God can only use them to a certain extent. And so if you really want to be used of God, you have to be willing to sell completely out to God and be willing to give up your lifestyle and be willing to give up everything that you know uh, for the purpose of the gospel. Now, this Jesus Christ, when he called his disciples, he made that very clear and very plain that if you follow me, you have to deny yourself. You have to be willing to love me and my commission more than you love your own life. And that means your children, your parents, your houses, your cars, all of these things that you spend up time uh, loving and, and, and gathering up to yourself. You have to be willing to give all of that up for my sake. And, not, and there are a lot of ministers who aren't willing to do that. And they think that they're going to hold on to all these things and still do what God have called them to do. Now, there are times when God will allow us uh, uh, to hold on to things because that doesn't get in the way of our calling. Whatever, because we each got our own particular call. But there are times when God calls us from one place to another or he calls us to do a certain work. And it may require us to give up our job or may require us to move out of state or whatever the case is. We have to be willing to do that if God says so. Now, <clears throat> again, you know, we've read before in the seventh chapter of Matthew that uh, what Jesus said, not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, will enter into heaven. Why? Because a lot of people have accepted the salvation of the Lord, but haven't made him Lord over their lives. Now, Lord means that he's your boss. You do what he say do. And regardless of the cost, you're going to have to do what God says do. And if there are any stipulations and if there's anything in your life that you're not willing to give up for God's sake, then God is not your Lord. You still your own Lord. You you are your own God. Now, we hate to say it that way, but we have to make it plain. If there is anything that get in the way of you serving God wholeheartedly, then that has become your God. And as we know that idolaters won't enter into the into the kingdom of heaven. OK, let's go ahead and uh, uh, keep reading. Jesus said unto him, let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. Now, here was another man, the second man. Uh, he wanted Jesus told him to follow him. But he his thing was his father died and he wanted to go bury his father. Now, we would think that Jesus would be sensitive enough. This man just lost his father, apparently. And all he wanted to do was go bury his father. But apparently him going to bury his father was going to get in the way of something that Jesus wanted him to do, which was going and preaching the kingdom of God. Now, <clears throat> this is a harsh saying, but God makes it plain here. Jesus Christ makes it plain here that there is nothing that can get in the way of us preaching and doing what God have called us to do. Not even not loved ones, not father, not mother. Any of those things, there's nothing that should get in the way of that. Let's go ahead and keep reading. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. And Jesus said unto him, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Now, this is what Jesus thought about these three men. You put your hand in the plow. In other words, you start preaching. When you start looking back and wishing you can go back and, and, and thinking about all the things and uh, all of those things, Jesus said that you're not worthy of the kingdom if you do that. Why? Because you have to realize that the souls that you have commissioned to win for Jesus Christ is more important than anything else that you would give up in life. Souls have to be our, our number one focus. Winning souls. That's what we're commissioned to do. Go ahead and keep reading at chapter 10, verse 1. After, the, after these things, the Lord appointed other seventy also and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place, whether he himself will come. Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, 
that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Now here, there is the commission. Jesus sent them 70 out, two by two, into every city where he would himself would come. And he's letting them know that the harvest is truly great. great. Now what does that mean? That there are souls out there that are waiting to be won. But unfortunately, the laborers are few. Now, does that mean that there aren't a lot of preachers? Yeah, there are plenty of preachers just about on every corner that you could think of. There are churches and several preachers in those churches. We got more than enough preachers to get people saved. But unfortunately, there are not enough preachers that are willing to sell out completely so that souls can be won. And, 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 and so we have to. That's why we're preaching this message this morning. We have to be willing to completely get out of ourselves, get out of religion, get out of all these formalities and get out into the streets and win souls. And what really we need to do is, is to be willing to listen to the Holy Spirit and be guided and by the Holy Spirit of where we're to go. I believe every preacher have their particular assignment where they're supposed to be. And there are people uh, in those particular places where these ministers are supposed to be that God have designed and have set up to hear your particular voice. Like say, friends, my name is Brother Bolden and God have commissioned me to be right here where I am today. Why? Because there are souls that are supposed to hear what I'm what uh, the Lord is going to preach through me this day. Now, that being said, every minister have their own particular place where God wants them to be. But unfortunately, we get in the way of ourselves because we have a particular job somewhere. We have our loved ones in this place. Our family is here. And so we're going to be where our family is. We're going to be where our job is. We don't want to have to give up those things. We're going to be where uh, faces are familiar to us. And when we do that, a lot of times we get out of the will of God because we're not willing to give up what God have called us to give up for his sake. Now, we have to be willing to give those things up for God's sake, not only for his sake, but for the sake of the kingdom to actually get people to come to the Lord. And, and we know uh, in the Bible, it says that he who in his souls is wise. Now, why is a soul counted as being won? Because it is a prize. Anything that you win is considered a prize. And so that's the way we have to look at it is when when we're called to, to, to soul winning, then we should rejoice when a soul is won. And it is worth it when we go out and when we step out, of, step out of our comfort zone uh, for the purpose of, of winning souls. And we see that soul won. It, it should bring us joy. But anything that we do for God, that is our reward, is the, the, the joy of being called. Now, uh, we have a lot of ministers who, uh, who have lost the idea, lost the fact that none of us deserve to be called of the Lord in the first place. None of us deserve to be up preaching. None of us deserve to be even saved. But by grace and God's mercy, we're saved and we're commissioned of God. Now, that being the case, we also have to remember that once we are commissioned and called to preach of God, that we have to remember that at one point we were uh, we were lost and we were not saved. And somebody had to come and preach the gospel to us. But sometimes we lose focus of that. We lose we lose sight of the fact that just like. We had to hear the gospel and be saved. There are other people who we're commissioned to preach to. They're going to have to hear the gospel and be saved. Now, that being said, let's go real quick to the 10th chapter of Romans. Tenth chapter of Romans, we'll start reading uh, verse 11. Oh, no, actually, let's start reading verse 10. For with the heart man believe unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture said, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Now you see, there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. Now how does that translate for us today? In God's eyes, there is no difference between nations, uh, uh, different nationalities, uh, whether you're male or female. There is no difference anymore. God is called for everybody. It's not God's intention for anybody to die and lose their soul. Everybody deserves to have the chance to hear the gospel preached. Everyone. We, as, as church people, I, I'd say, and as religious people, we've gotten to the point where we love to sit amongst ourselves and we believe that we're just called God's elect. And, and, you know, we believe that, you know, I guess we think that it's just something that we've done. And sometimes we forget 
that at one time we were all lost. At one time we were all without hope. But God have commissioned us to take the gospel to everybody, to every creature. And so here in verse uh, verse 12, it says that there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek for the same Lord over all is rich unto all. In other words, God extends the same mercy that he extended to us. He will extend it to other people. And we have to be willing to share that. Sometimes that means us telling the testimony to people. People out in the world need to know that we Christians didn't start off being saved. They need to know that we didn't start off being uh, uh, sanctified. We didn't start off being mature in the Lord like we uh, are. They need to know that we had a hard road. They need to know sometimes that there were times when we failed. There were times when, when we lost hope. Why? Because those things will encourage them. It encourages people when they know that you've been where they are. And sometimes you still have the struggles in your life. It encourages people to know that you haven't always been in a place where you are now, that you had to grow to that point. Why? Because when you let them know where you've come from and they're in that place where you've come from, it lets them know that they can get to the place where you are right at this present moment. And we all need to realize is that without God, we're nowhere anyway. Without God, we're nothing anyway. We all, you know, I think it's very amazing that we walk on dirt every day walk on dirt every day you know when we go out in the yard we see dirt laying out there in, in the yard we see grass but you know of course out of out of dirt springs grass and so it's amazing to me that we were all created from that we all come from dirt all come from dust now that is how much we should think of ourselves within ourselves in other words we need to realize that without god all we are is dust when it you know when god formed man and created man when god formed man in his own image we were dust he formed us out of the dust of the ground. It wasn't until God breathed into us the breath of life that we became a living soul. Now, what does that mean? That without God, that's all we are is dust. It's not until God breathed into us that we become anything that's worthy of anything to begin with. And so that is what we uh, as Christians and as ministers should take to the world, that we were all on the same level as far as God was concerned. All of us were just lost and without hope. But we've been commissioned by God to bring that gospel to the people. What the gospel of this is that all you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. That's all it takes. It's not all these man-made rules and traditions that we have going on in church and all of these things. There, we shouldn't even place standards on people that we ourselves have put on ourselves. It is all about Jesus Christ and what he has done. That is the commission. That is the gospel being preached in its simplicity. It's not about all these man-made rules. It's not about how many times you go to church a week and all of these, you know, how many clubs you belong to in the church and all these different uh, faculties and things we got going on uh, amongst ourselves. It's not about that. It's about getting people to develop a relationship with God. That is our commission. Jesus says uh, in the book of Matthew, uh, when he commissioned his disciples, he says to go ye into all the world and preach the gospel uh, uh, and to make disciples of men is basically what he was saying. Now, how do we make disciples? We convert them over to Christianity. In other words, we preach the gospel to them, but we also teach them the ways of God, not of ourselves, not of our religion, not of our denomination, but we preach the things of God to them. And that is what it would take to win souls to, to Jesus Christ is people need to see God in us, not our religion, not our formalities. We need to get rid of all that junk that that God didn't commission. And we need to stick with the original program. And that's winning souls. Now, all of this, all of these other things that we do, praise and worship. We know that God is God. He is Jehovah. And he's and he is the object of our worship. And we know that. But are we worshiping God in vain if we're not doing what he's commissioned us to do? Our worshiping is in vain if we're not doing what he's commissioned us to do, which is win souls. Now, uh, oftentimes when people go to church, it's to satisfy themselves. It's not to satisfy God. It's not to please God, but it's to just to, for them to be able to say, well, I went to church today. Well, what did you get out of it? How many people were touched? How many souls did, were won when you went today? That is what we should think about. And, and oftentimes we lose sight of that. We lose sight of what our commission was. It's like, you know, many of you may have experienced uh, um, going to the store for some reason, going to the store. You got in your mind, I need to go to the store to get something. You know, maybe you, you got a meal at home that you're wanting to cook and you're missing an ingredient. And so you go to the store. But when you go to the store, you forget what you went there for. And in your back of your mind, you think, I know I'm forgetting something and you just completely forget what you went for. And that's what oftentimes happens with 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 Christians. We forget what we're saved for. Our job as Christians is to let our light shine before men. Why? Because our lifestyle, we don't even have to open our mouth to preach the gospel. Our lifestyle 
should preach for us. We shouldn't have to walk around telling people we're Christians because the world is tired of seeing all these phonies. We, by our lifestyle, can preach the gospel to people. They should see the love that we have in us and the compassion that we have towards others. Jesus said, by when you love one another, that's how men know that you are my disciples, when you have love for one another. So how do we show that? How do we show that we're the disciples of Jesus Christ? And how do we preach this gospel in its truest form? Is by loving one another. That's how we preach, and that is our commission. Number one, to love one another, and that is basically how we get the gospel out to other people, by how we treat one another. But oftentimes in church, as we said before, people are so nasty towards one another, and they turn their nose up and thinking they're better than, than the world, not knowing that it's only by the blood of Jesus Christ that we're saved ourselves, not we of our our own, not our own works and not by what we've done, but by what Jesus Christ have done. And that is the message that the world need to hear today, that they can be saved. It doesn't cost them anything. They don't have to purchase it. They, it can't be bought, but it's free to anyone that will call on the name of Jesus Christ and believe in the finished work of the cross. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this word that you've ministered to us today, Lord. And Lord, we ask that as we continue to go through this series, Lord, that you will continue to reveal your truth to us, Lord, about our commission. And God, we ask that you help us. And number one, we ask that you forgive us, Lord, for not doing what you've called us to do as, as your body, Lord. We ask that you help us, Lord, to get back on track with winning souls and with, with commissioning people, Lord, with calling people to repentance and calling them to come and live for you, Lord. Help us, Lord, to always be mindful and always stay focused on what our commission is, Lord. And may we always let our light shine so that people may see those good works, Lord, and glorify you, Lord. May we always keep you the center of our attention and the center of our focus, Lord, knowing that it's by you. You said if you be lifted up that you'll draw all men, Lord. So help us, Lord, to, co to continue to lift you up as we continue to Praise your name, Lord. It's always about you, and may we always be mindful of that, Lord. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for commissioning us to preach your gospel. And may we never forget, Lord, what our purpose is. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.